G'day folks, thanks for joining me again today. Today I'm going to show you a homebrew external battery pack for trail cameras that I made. Nice and easy. In Australia we don't get to see many of the trail camera accessories that are in overseas markets and sometimes we have to get in and do a bit of a home brew and create our own accessories as I've done with this external battery pack. Let's see how I created it. It's easy to do, cheap and best of all it's got a battery that's rechargeable that will power your trail camera. Let's go, let's see how I did it. All right you're looking to get an external battery pack happening for your trail camera here's how we go about it first up you want to make sure that your trail camera has an external power supply input now we'll put that up you can see that there that is the spy point camera that I'm showing you there and on this it will give you a DC voltage input. So basically that's the battery power that you're looking to provide to this camera. Now a big caveat here is creating this will void your warranty. It's not an approved product so you're going to void the warranty on your trail camera by creating your own power supply. For me no drama because I cannot source this in Australia and it does get costly to get in and replace the batteries. Okay, so the first thing I needed to determine and you'll need to determine is what power is going into your trail camera. This one here is 12 volt DC. So I then knew that I needed a 12 volt battery. 12 volt sealed lead acid costs about, around about the $30 mark Australian take about 30% off that so you're looking at around about $20 US for the battery. Now the manufacturers when they create their own external power packs are doing them in a 12 volt 7 amp hour. This one I've got here is a 12 volt 6.5 amp hour. Plenty of power. This will last in the field just about forever and a day and the beauty of this is you just plug it in and recharge it off a 12 volt battery charger. Now keep in mind some trail cameras run different voltages it's up to you to determine what the voltage input is. Some are running 6, some are running 12, I don't know if others are running 9's. Alright so I determined that I need 12 volt battery which I've got this is 6.5 amp hour, that was the closest I could get to the 7 amp hours that the manufacturers are putting in their kits. Look, these can go upwards and onwards with different types of amp hours and it's basically how long the battery's going to last. Right, so I've determined that I need a 12 volt battery to power my trail camera. Next step, I've got to get power from this battery into the trail camera. To do that I've got a DC plug. Now this was bought just from an electronic shop. It did have a car cigarette lighter attachment on here that I've cut off and I've gone with a couple of lugs on here that fit snugly onto the battery terminals purely because while this is in the field I don't want these pulling off if there's wind shakes the tree or something like that I'm pretty secure that in the knowledge that these lugs are going to hang in there you could go with alligator clips that would be nice and easy to connect and disconnect but they may shake off if there's something hits the tree or it's exceptionally windy that's why I've gone for the lugs now the connecting end of this DC plug, you can see it there hopefully, that is a 2.1mm plug. 
that'll go straight in to my camera and it does fit a couple of other major brands apparently now there are apparently well there's definitely step up rings for this that can make this bigger or I'm guessing there would also be step down adapters to be able to fit this to connectors some cameras have smaller connectors but if this isn't fitting just make sure that you've got the correct voltage battery I have another camera that has a smaller fitting than this and it's a 6 volt battery that it needs not a 12 volt so you don't want to ruin your camera by putting the incorrect voltage in so this one here 2.1 millimeter DC plug like I said it did have a cigarette lighter on the end of it a cigarette lighter plug cut that off put a couple of lugs on there to give it a nice secure connection onto the battery all right I'll show you how simple this is just putting on battery clip one there battery clip two so there we are got our positive and negative on there and then we're just plugging that straight into our external power supply nice and snug in there you can see there's no batteries in there and when we flick it on you should be able to see there now that we're in the setup menu and we've got plenty of power to it right so you've got your battery you've got your lead all set up the lugs on the end or the alligator clips or however you decided to go about connecting it to the battery you're going to need something to house that battery in out in the weather what did I do I found this in an auto shop it is called an instrument case why did I go with this purely it comes with foam packing there to give it a bit of padding it also had foam packing in here but I removed that to try and um, get a bit of ventilation and that happening for the battery it's up to you whether you go this way and leave it in there but the big factor of me deciding this is it's relatively waterproof I wouldn't say it's totally waterproof but it is really pretty well waterproof it has rubber seals around here that creates that waterproof seal and it's lockable you can see here it can be locked through these two holes and I'll show you a little trick using a python lock how to get your camera and the case all in one nice neat package using the one cable lock now the other reason I went for an instrument case is these things are really solid in case you start getting vermin deciding to chew into your case now for me the initial thought was hmm, I might go just a plastic fishing tackle box or just a cheap plastic toolbox well these things here are that cheap anyway this was about $16 US it's about $24 Australian and you've got largely you know a bulletproof case that is going to provide a pretty decent level of security and a pretty decent level of waterproofing for your battery now the only other modification I had to make to this box was to drill a hole in the side here to allow the cables to exit from the battery to the camera now after having this in the field for a while a nest of ants thought it would be a really good place to make home because I didn't seal that hole off well enough I used a bit of gaffer tape duct tape on it and I left a little part open on the bottom and yeah the ants decided this would be pretty much a great place to build a nest so there's a couple of ways you could go with it I looked at putting a rubber grommet in there and I didn't think that would be too different to putting the duct tape through 
probably the cheapest solution would be if you're going to run your cable through there and you don't want to put a longer cable in at any stage just seal it off with a bit of silicon sealant that might be the way to go right now the final piece of the puzzle was to provide a bit of protection in the field for this cable that runs from the battery box to the camera to do that I've gone with some automotive cable ducting and this is split down the middle and it's just a case of running this through that ducting all the way and it's going to give it a bit of protection from vermin so that there is how it looks when it's out in the field I haven't got the entire cable through this because I've brought it in for demonstration purposes but again not expensive find it in your automotive shop or even in a um, electronic shop and that'll give you some protection from vermin and stuff like that and a bit from the weather as well when it's out in the field all right here we are this is the end result our external trail camera battery box we can see how it's finished up this is where the cables are exiting again you can use a bit of silicon to seal that off, a grommet, duct tape, but just make sure you're not going to get an ant colony in there like mine did. I'll seal that off a bit better in the field in future. But there we have it. Now, don't go away. I'm just going to give you a quick bonus tip on how I cable tie this, or actually cable lock this in on the camera in the field to help protect this from theft as well okay so how do we secure this and stop it or help prevent it from getting stolen when it's out in the field if you've got a python lock running through your trail camera it's real easy we've got our python lock here we're taking this end and we're just feeding it straight through the locking hole on the battery box and then we're taking it back through the other side here and it's making one big loop it's going through the camera around the tree in through this one back in through this one and then ultimately into the lock so you've got one big loop there see that it'll hold it nice and secure to the tree and you've got a relatively pretty good level of protection for your battery box. If you like what you're seeing, it'd be awesome if you could give me a thumbs up. It helps my channel out heaps. Even better, hit the subscribe button. I'm always putting new content out there. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.